Hey there, just thought I'd share with you some um, embroidery um, techniques. Um, a lot of you would have already started doing embroidery, you're quite familiar with it, quite um, confident with it, but if you're not confident, um, never tried it before, I'm hoping this will inspire you. Um, I started hand stitching many years ago and only recently taken it up since lockdown. This is my first piece that I did and this I did when I was age nine. So this is over 50 years old. This is my American native uh, Indian and I made this at primary school. Don't know why I've kept it all these years but I've still got her and I still love her. So that's that one. Um, over the past few weeks since lockdown I've been trying out different uh, embroidery patterns and uh, techniques and there's this little one okay and there's this little one yeah this biggish one yeah and this one. Now basically these are all the same type of stitch. There's nothing complicated about them. They come from these two books here. Now you can see on the front cover of this one most of those uh, patterns there and they're quite basic stitches. All I've used is outline stitch, couching, French knots, running stitch and long stitch. The difference being when you get your embroidery threads, you can either use the whole thread which has got six strands in. Now that will give a, a thicker stitch, slightly heavier looking embroidery. Now I personally prefer to use just a couple of strands. Most embroidery patterns will tell you how many strands to use. And what I like about these two books is mostly they're three strands, two strands or one strand. So if you're not familiar with these, when you get the, the uh, embroidery threads like this, okay, you unwind it and you'll come out with a long strand. And then what you do is you separate them. So you can, if you separate them at the top, it just shows you how they separate into six strands. And that is how you do it. Now to separate the strands, if you're not familiar with this, because they get all tangled up, is you've got two ways of doing it. You can either get hold of your strand that you want to use, press your body against it, against the table, and pull. And it comes apart. Another way of doing it is you get your strands, and I'm trying to do this without glasses on. I put it under my chin, hold it, and separate it that way. And that just stops them getting all knotted up because it'll all twist up. So that is how you separate, separate your strands. Uh, be mindful about the needle you use. Now I've got quite a few uh, needles. So you want a needle that hasn't got too big an eye on it and it needs to be quite sharp. So you'll get some needles that are quite thick. Yeah. And then you'll get some needles that are nice and sharp. So you can buy packets of needles where it says on the pack embroidery needles. So just be mindful of that. So I like to have needles that are quite long have a smallish eye but enough to get the thread through and are very sharp okay so they're the sort of needles I like to use now this is my next bit of embroidery okay now I will do a little video of close-up of me doing these stitches uh, a bit later on but for now I'll just show you how I got the idea from that loving both these books that I've got I decided I wanted to do an embroidery with designs from both of them and sort of uh, mishmash them up. So I've recently bought a new uh, frame that is this long. I went to the range last week and found this and I loved it. I didn't know what I was going to do with it but I thought there's got to be a project that can 
do this frame justice. So yesterday I came up with the idea of doing a long embroidery from both these books. So I took out the bit of paper that's in the frame and looking at some of the embroideries I've already done and my favourite bits, I've done a design to go in this frame. And what I've done is I've just drawn the stems of grass, the stems of flowers and some of the other things like the spider's web and the spider you can see on there. I haven't put the tops of the flowers in, not yet, because I sort of know which ones they're going to be. And I've gone over it with a fine liner, then I put it on my light box, put my fabric over the top of it. So it's just cotton and I've got a little bit of wadding at the back of it. You don't have to use wadding, you can use felt or you can use double um, thickness cotton or you can just do the single thickness cotton. I really do like the feel of it, it's got a slightly quilted feel to it, I, I like that but everybody's different so you do it how you want to do it. So what I've done is I've put the, fat, the cotton over the light box and I've traced through my picture onto the fabric. Now I've used a friction gel pen and the friction gel pens are brilliant because when you've um, done your embroidery or you don't want those marks there if you've made a mistake um, etc what you do with this is you run a, an iron over it and it disappears but occasionally you'll get a fabric where this doesn't want to disappear the colour will disappear but not the actual gel and you'll be able to see the gel marks so it's really good idea to do a test piece first draw on the corner of your fabric iron it to make sure it comes off okay if you're not keen on using that or you haven't got one of those you can get soluble pens so you could draw with the soluble pen do your tracing with that and then iron over it and uh, not iron over it sorry silly me you can wash it and then it will disappear you can actually get pens that fade as well so you can draw on it but the problem is if you start to do your embroidery and then you go off and do something else or have a few slurps of your wine it can fade by the time you've gone back to it you've just got to find the best uh, best way for you really so I'm hoping that that has uh, inspired you. As I said, I'll do a little bit of a demo, a close-up demo of me actually doing some of the stitching uh, to follow on from, from this one. Okay, so thank you for watching.